and the winning super fan is Jim. Congratulations. It was a power charged episode of Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge as tonight's winner Jim transformed his 1969 matte black Dodge Charger into a wheelie popping yellow monster. The winning build six foot wheelie bar, the power charged hydraulic pumps and exposed Hemi engine earned this custom van upfitter from New Jersey a key to the finale and a chance to create the next Hot Wheels diecast. Thank you, Hot Wheels. Seeing that car again, I feel like I'm 18 years old, man. I'm humbled to sit in this car. It feels great, man. Jim and his carpool set the wheelie bar high, felt the grind, then kicked it into high gear when the Inspirationator 5000 threw them for a loop. Your team's gonna have to incorporate at least one element from this design into your ultimate Hot Wheel. Right now, join our panel of car experts and me, Rutledge Wood, for a revved up debate over which wheels will cruise into the grand finale and who will ride above to become the next Hot Wheels diecast. And now I'm here and I'm gonna build a Hot Wheels. It doesn't get any better than that. This is Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge Best Builds. Welcome to the after show. Hurt Dalal and Rutt here with you. Unbelievable. Jim just pulled out the win over Jadeja. Let's talk about it. So Jim built that 69 Dodge Charger and boy, did it stand up and do a wheel. Go baby, go! go. What'd you think? Oh man, that thing blew me away. I gotta be honest, it was such a tight race. I could not tell who was gonna take it, but Jim really won my heart over when that thing performed. I was not expecting it to go that high. The wheelie was cool, but I was definitely in love with the bass boat paint. The flake in that yellow was just, woo! Spectra flame almost. Yeah, it, really, it had a spectra flame vibe, right? I thought you were gonna say the 426 supercharged Hemi in the back was really what did it for you. Well, it was hard to see it from the front, so that's why, you know. I think you mean it was hard to see it from underneath uh, the yes. car. <laughs> I think it was two chains that said, what I'm seeing from the back, I can't front on. Mm, you had to get it in there, huh? And I agree. I mean, that car looked incredible. I tell you what, this thing was neck and neck. How about Jadeja's Camaro? That thing looked insane. What was your favorite thing about that car? You know, one of my favorite things about Jadeja's car is how much work they did to that body. I don't know about I've got, I, I've got a massive amount of gas. Yeah, I do too. It doesn't even fit up to the wheel. No, it doesn't. And it's like a funny angle. I don't think this is going to work. Oh, boy. Like, I'm not going to lie. This looks terrible. We're just going to have to fabricate something from scratch. They started off with a body kit that didn't fit. I think that was kind of a blessing in disguise because it really forced them to do a lot of sculpting and a lot of carving and a lot of body work. I love low and aggressive cars and Jadeja's build really brought that out. But the only thing kind of holding it back was the stance and the functionality. I mean, it seemed like they had the starting point of how the wheels and the tires were gonna work with the fenders. And then when they got the twist, bad to the blade, they sort of went one direction where Jim and the power charge kind of went a different way. Your team's gonna have to incorporate at least one element from this design into your ultimate Hot Wheels. <laughs> What? Yeah. Like we don't have enough designs. One was overwhelming, one was underwhelming, but I guess it's really risk versus reward, right? Right. When you look at Jadeja's car, I think the way that they use those two wings helped in some ways and hurt in others. I personally didn't love the out of the box wing that they found and put on there. I really loved the wing that they made. It just had so much presence. I think for me though, the wheels and tires were just moved out too far to keep any real flow of the build. The only thing that was a con on it would be the tires. Just, they jut out a little far for me. Of course, on the other side of the garage, Jim was really understated when it came to the way that they implemented their twist. They did a little bit of arrow on the sides, but honestly, you could barely tell it was there. They just slapped something on there and walked away. And, and they were like, that that's good? enough, right? I'm still waiting to see more of that Hot Wheels element here in the front. She's just putting the pressure on me. That's what this competition <laughs> is all about. Again, it's one of those things where they didn't do something to disrupt that classic silhouette of the body, but it didn't help them because they were so sort of meek about the choices they were making. 
One thing that both of these rides really had were some incredible personal touches. When you saw the power charge lift up and there underneath was let the good times roll car club. I mean, we saw and felt that emotion from Jim immediately. Jim, what's on the bottom? Ah, uh, you guys put that on? That's my mom and dad car club. They started that in 1959. <clears throat> and when they died, they left it to us. And now it's on the car. Your story was so good, Jim. We had to get it in, in the build. Thank you, guys. I can't believe they did that. It's unbelievable. Seeing your family's car club underneath, man, that's so special. This is what, what the whole Hot Wheels tradition is all about. Who's cutting onions? Was that you? <laughs> What an awesome Easter egg, and it's so nice to know that it was his carpoolers that actually had that idea. I mean, it's so sweet to see them really become a family and them wanting to do that for him. But they weren't the only ones. I mean, if you look at the way Jadeja's car and her team really incorporated those words of affirmation, those, those kind of special memories of her aunt in the car using binary code, that was really cool. What about these notes that were on the dash? Beautiful, keep your head up. When I would get in the car, there were always like handwritten notes to my aunt. I really needed this reminder because I wasn't feeling like I was loved. I didn't know it in the moment that like who I am today was all going to start right there. The cool part about Jadeja is she's never built a car. And so coming in this garage and finding a new love and finding a new passion for building cars with her team, and, and learning that one of the fun parts of building cars is adding your own personal touches that tell your personal stories. Okay, so two great Ultimate Hot Wheels, but what was it that pushed Jim's car over the top? I definitely have to say Jim's wheelie was, it set the tone. It's, he literally set the bar this high. But Jim's goal was to wheelie. Did it wheelie? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Let it rip. Amazing. It's been a 40 year journey, and I finally got to see that wheelie. As the car went up, perfect. This paint was great. Moving a 427 supercharged motor to the back with huge zoomies was a nice touch. Uh, but once they made a stand up almost 10 feet in the air, I feel like that sealed the deal. You know, throughout the week, we were so concerned that Jim and his team didn't really do enough design work to their car. But what we didn't realize is just how much engineering went into this build. And I don't think we really saw it until it did that wheelie. And I think it just became so clear after that. I mean, all their work was stuff we really couldn't see. That wheelie bar, yeah, we saw that, but we didn't realize how much of that was really providing support for those two huge hydraulic rams. And that thing stood straight up towards the sky. That was really special. Okay, so Jim won our first battle, which means he has a chance to compete in the finale, but he's not in yet. There will be eight super fan winners that all get a key to the finale, but out of those, ultimately, only three of them will actually be able to go on and build a car for the finale. That's gonna be a tough decision for us. Okay, so let's talk about how we decide who will get a chance to compete in the finale. There's seven different unique categories that we judge all of these cars on. Tell us about them. Well, we like to judge these cars on originality, execution, and hotness. And of course, within those larger categories are smaller ones. We're thinking about the transformation of this build from beginning to end, the way that they incorporated the twist, the Hot Wheels factor, of course, how they incorporated their personal elements of their story. Ultimately, which one gives us the feeling of a life-size Hot Wheels? What skills can Jim bring to the table for a car in the finale? I mean, he came in with such a strong vision and just such a strong idea of what he wanted to build. And of course, his family has been working on cars since he was a kid. He was even a truck driver for a little bit. Like, he just has so much automotive history in his life. Well, he takes vans and creates whatever people need, whether that's a plumbing truck, whether that's a municipal truck, whatever it is, that's what he does for a living. So he's got some real versatility when it comes to building cars. Plus, He's a hot rodder, right? I mean, this guy rides a Harley. He grew up, his first car was a 69 Dodge Charger. So I think this guy is a real competitor, potentially in the finale. Who will be our grand prize winner and take home $50,000 and have their design turned into a Hot Wheels die cast? 
Find out on Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. on NBC and streaming the next day on Peacock. And be sure to join us every week after the broadcast for the after show.